Alright, so today we're going to be doing a little bit of troubleshooting on this little uh, kicker. I think it's an 8 or a 7, I can't remember. We'll find out here soon enough what they actually call it. And uh, maybe some failure analysis because I don't think she's going to live. But let's take a look at her. Donkey's breath. Alright, so here we have... Alright, so here we have a kicker, 8L5, so it is an 8 inch, dual 4 ohm, so a little bulbaric. This looks like at least a generation old, but there's feels something really rough in the whole suspension down here, but we're going to take a closer look in a sec here. I mean, cute enough little box, too bad it's square and you can't just put something uh, more common in it, but um, these speaker wire leads, which hook up to the terminal over here, are actually nicely done, like they, they're soldered tips and everything, so whoever did this manually did a good job. Anyways, cute little box. Alright, so after a little bit of uh, searching on the internet here about this guy, it all has a patent number and like a model, but it doesn't have a... Yeah, things are crashing all over the place. It doesn't have a model number, it just has the uh, Soul Barbaric 8, or L5 Soul Barbaric, and it could be the 2008, 2005, 2002. We got the manuals here in the Kicker website. I don't think it's the 2008 because it has the older style, um, I guess you could call it cone, just the older look to it. Um, so I'm going to try the 2005 and see if this resembles what we're dealing with here. All right, after a little bit of con slight continued internet education, I want to say it is the 2006 variant just because I'm not going too deep into this, just because the way the, uh, what do you call that, the basket looks on these diagrams but i could be wrong if you know something i don't well why don't you just tell me anyways uh we're gonna get back to the subwoofer now all right so we're just gonna give a simple little multimeter test specifically uh ohm, ohming out as people call it of these two coils here see what they read see what they give us the sed's reading out um four ohms just like it should actually it was like 3.9 this set given us here. Slightly lower, 3.6, but still there. It still lives. All right, so I guess it's time to give this guy a little quick hookup. And I guess before we go outside and hook this up, I just wanted to elaborate on how, like, there's something rubbing in here. We're, this is, it's probably gonna work a little bit, but like, yeah. Something's like, definitely, Something's definitely messed up in there, but we're going to try and see what it does, and then we're going to bring it back and tear it down. Alright guys, so here's the rough setup. We got my uh, vehicle setup, T213, 2 ohms on a T2500. Anyways, what we're going to do is we're going to take these two 4 ohm coils, put them in parallel, and parallel that 2 ohm load with this 2 ohm load, just by jumping to these terminals right here. It's real redneck. Yes, I know I have Lumex here. Don't have any stranding cable, but this will work for this test and uh, we'll be done with it. So uh, we're gonna set this tripod down here and we're gonna give her a go. All right, so that little test in my car there showed us that technically it does work, but it took uh, probably a little bit more power than the coil is actually rated for to, for it to overcome whatever friction it's encountering. But a closer look into the suspension here, if I didn't do this earlier, is it's a little bit looser now than before, but it still kind of like sticks up and sticks down. It doesn't come back to like a resting neutral. It's pretty, yeah, something's really sticking in there, but it's not in the surround. I can't see any problem like on top of the the spider in here and all the leads and everything of this woofer like they look intact but I guess we're gonna tear this apart and see what's wrong so I guess we're gonna flip it over and pull off the magnet shroud or cover whatever the hell you want to call this cheap fake rubber um, guy here come on baby there we go so they do, this, this uh, kicker woofer does similar thing as like Rockford Fosgate does in some of their woofers. All right, so they're, uh, 
One large one, I'd say about, I don't know, a little bit over half inch and then another one a little bit less than or about a quarter inch. And they're a little offset, or is that actually a one single crack? Hmm, part of me wants to say that's, I can't, I don't know if that's cracked or if that's shifted, but I guess we're gonna find out because it's weird because we have a little stamp here on this magnet and the way like that stuff looks, it almost looks like this magnet cracked for whatever reason, whether cold, impact, poor design, but yeah, it kind of looks like it cracked. That might be our culprit right here, but anyways, we're gonna dive into this guy a little bit further here. So, uh, let's give her. Oh, this feels so wrong. Chopping into the surround of a woofer like this with just a knife. Feels so wrong. It's gonna be fixed. Now, this woofer is toast. But I think that magnet, the more I look at it, the more I think it's cracked. It's a pretty perfect crack, so one can, one can not blame me for thinking it might be designed that way. Come on, you're so close. Still there, oh, there we go, there we go. All right, so we can see a little rub section right there on the coil. That might be part to explain why one coil was slightly less resistant than the other. Maybe a couple of them were bridged and the others weren't, but the three, I think this is a 300 watts RMS woofer. It's an all right voice coil, I guess. But generally, I like the way they, they did all of, uh, all of their stuff here. Might take this apart a little bit further, but let's continue diving into this guy as much as we can. All right, I don't know if the, if the angle does it justice, but you can definitely see how the center part, I'm not sure the technical name for this, versus the outer part of the, the magnet, how shifted it is and offset, and how that right there is pinch point, and over here it's way wider. Yeah, we know that it's got to do with the, the motor's assembly here. I think I'm using the right terminology, and we're gonna see what happens if we take this apart and see if we can take that slug apart and see the crack. Okay, so now we've set, we're separated the basket from the, the magnet assembly. It looks like a little bit of epoxy or something right there. So there's our basket. We can move back over here. All right, so doing that, I definitely knocked these more out of alignment. And the more I look at it, the more I think they are actually uh, one piece that had broke. The more I look at it, but I'm gonna try and take this apart further, but I'm definitely gonna need two hands. So I'm just gonna go do it and I'll be back. So I done did her. It took, uh, took two hands and it took a couple of tools getting definitely magnetized and a lot of shards that I broke off, but these are, this is definitely a broken slug. I don't know how I didn't see it before, but you know, brushed over it, not, not, not seeing it. But no, that's definitely the problem is that this broken, misaligned, started rubbing, subwoofers like completely pushed by then. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna give this subwoofer back to my buddy in a box and say, yeah, it was Anyways, I hope uh, this was helpful. If you have any questions, if you have any problems, I know it was a bit sketchy earlier when I, you know, was just like, oh yeah, let's just test it by pushing it here with a bit of Lumax. That was pretty cheese ball, but hell, I'm not at home. I don't have any proper wire. It's like minus 20 outside right now, and I just wanted to, wanted to do this as a little demonstration, but uh, yeah, well, thanks for watching. As good as new, right guys? Hey Chuck, you come to hang out, shoot a YouTube video? Hey Chuck? Hey? Did you come here to shoot a YouTube video? You can be internet famous, man. No, you came in here to sniff in my trash.